Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories, where today, my wife drained our savings and got on a plane. When we first got married, I was all of our income. I was making around 80000 a year, but I was working 50 to 60 hours a week. My wife had small jobs that she would do for a month here or there just for a little extra spending money. We've been saving for a house since we currently rent a condo and we both want to have kids. With wanting to start a family, I did not want to work as much as I was because I felt I'd miss out on a lot of our kids' childhood. I decided to find another job with a better schedule. I found a normal Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week job that I'm happy with, but as you can imagine, losing all of that overtime came at a cost. We talked about it before I changed careers and she told me that she would work and help because now I'd be making significantly less. I went from 80,000 down to about 55,000 a year. Fast forward five months. She worked part-time at a restaurant for a few months and helped pay for groceries, which is all that I ever asked her to pay for. She loses the restaurant job that she was slowly starting to hate with the reason being they were too slow. Whether or not that's the real reason, I'm not sure. In the past, she could quit a job and it wouldn't really affect us, but things have changed since then. So now I've been working six days a week and 10 plus hours of overtime to make up for the loss of income. Monday I came home. We ate, then we had to go grocery shopping because I had no lunch meat for work lunches. On the way to the store, I asked her what she did today and she smirkingly responded, I laid in bed and did nothing at all. I said, that sounds nice. I wish I could do that, which made her angry. I told her that I didn't think it was fair that I had to work all this overtime to pick up the slack and she gets to lay in bed and do nothing all day. I said I feel like I'm contributing more to this relationship and it's not fair. She starts yelling at me in the car, so I bring her back home and drop her off. I proceed to go grocery shopping by myself. I come back home and she's gone. I text her a few hours later asking if she's coming home tonight and I get no answer. The next day, I go to work, come home, and notice some of her electronics are gone. iPad, Apple Watch, chargers, etc. I text her again. Are you coming home today? Still no answer, still doesn't come back. Thursday comes and she uploads a picture of herself on Snap inside Midway Airport. I respond asking why she was there to which she ignores. I check our savings and it's all gone. She took all of our house savings which is around $8,000 and I can only assume she got on a plane and left. She removed me on Snap, I tried contacting her and I'm getting the confirmation that she reads my messages but she's not responding. I'm not sure if she's coming back. I assume she is because she loves some jewelry that her mom got her that has some sentimental value. But honestly, I don't know if I should take her back. I don't know if I could ever trust her with money again. I don't know where she is or what she's doing, but it's been a week now. I haven't been without her for more than two days for the four years we've been married, and to do this really hurts me. Everyone I've talked to says I deserve better, and I shouldn't take her back if she does try to come back. I love her. Being without her drives me crazy. If she comes back, what should I do? Update. I caught her driving by the condo when I was leaving to meet some friends. I texted her and told her, I'm leaving for lunch. You can go to the apartment and start getting your stuff. This sparked a flurry of text messages and phone calls. I asked her to explain herself. She said she's been staying in a hotel nearby and she hasn't talked to me because she wanted me to call her. The text messages, Facebook messages, and Snapchat weren't what she wanted. She needed a phone call. I told her she was ignoring my attempts to contact her. Why would I try to call her? She never got on a plane. She said she took a picture at the airport dropping off her friend, which that was Thursday. So if she's back by Saturday, that would have been a short trip. So I kind of believe it. She didn't blow all the money, but she's been using it for the hotel and to eat. She admitted she was slacking around the house and recommended counseling for our issues. I explained how terrible it was being ghosted and left in the dark for a week. I told her I need time. She has no family in this country and only two friends, so I told her to stop wasting money on a hotel and offered the spare bedroom. OP, you need to immediately contact a divorce attorney. Freeze your credit, file for divorce, and move on. Dude, please get some self-respect and divorce her. Why would you ever take her back? Get a new bank account at a different financial institution and start having your paychecks direct deposited to it. Then go see a lawyer about a divorce. Well, what do you think? Should OP divorce his wife for this or not? Please let us know.
Some people in this world will take and take and take from you and never give anything in return. They feel entitled to all that you have to offer for some reason. The sooner you can get away from that type of person, the better. Am I the jerk for having dairy-free options at Thanksgiving, so now I'm not allowed to cook for Christmas dinner? I hosted Thanksgiving at my home this year. We have several lactose intolerant family members, one of them being my son's husband, so I made some recipes using oil or olive oil butter over real butter, or using lactate milk so it would be safe. I made sure to put the dairy-free items apart from anything with regular milk and butter by having a separate small table for those dishes. My son-in-law ended up feeling very ill and my son brought him to the ER that night. Even though I used safe ingredients, he still had a reaction to something unknown in the food. My son rang me up from the hospital asking what was in the dishes at the dairy safe table. I told him I had used oil, vegan butter, and lactate. He was upset with me because I put milk into the mashed potatoes. I told him again I put lactate milk so it would be safe. My son-in-law has recovered and he's doing well. My son, however, is quite upset with me and claims he cannot trust me to cook food for them again because I mislabeled the food. He's claiming he has told me many times about his husband's dairy allergy, and I agree he has, which is why I made separate food. It's now to the point where the family doesn't want me to make any dairy-free dishes for Christmas because I'm failing to understand. Instead, they have all agreed my sister-in-law will make some of those dishes while my son and son-in-law will make the rest. I'm beside myself because I love to cook for and feed my family. I feel I'm being displaced when what happened on Thanksgiving could have been caused by a reaction to anything. Your son-in-law is not lactose intolerant, he's allergic to dairy. Lactose intolerance is a completely different medical condition compared to dairy allergy. People who are allergic to dairy cannot have lactate milk or any dairy in any form. I can see that you tried your best to make something safe for your son-in-law, but it sounds like, without knowing, you made a mistake that could have resulted in your son-in-law's life. Also, it seems like you still don't understand the reason why the food you made was not safe for your son-in-law, so it's really for the best, for his safety, if you don't cook for him again. I'm sure you would not want your son-in-law to become very ill, or worse, from eating food that you cooked. So, I really hope you can come to terms with this and not feel like anyone is trying to displace you. You're the jerk. From the sound of your post, this is not the first time this has happened, and you have seemingly chosen to willfully ignore the information your son has provided for you about his husband's dietary needs, both verbally and as a written list. You may have seen the other comment explaining what's going on here, and you still don't understand it. Your willful neglect and repeatedly refusing to educate yourself or follow basic instructions, well, it makes you a jerk. Am I the jerk for wanting to get divorced because of a surname? My wife and I had difficulties in conceiving due to an accident I had when I was younger. After three years, we finally had our daughter three weeks ago. Baby and mom are home and healthy, but I've been on the couch due to an issue over the surname. My wife was previously in a long-term relationship with her ex, who she lost due to his mental health issues after he returned from service abroad. Her son from her first relationship lives with us and is 12 in a month's time. Her son has her ex's surname. She wants our baby to have her ex's surname. She still goes by that name, so that her son doesn't feel left out from his new sibling and future siblings, and because he had a better name than mine. I tried to compromise by saying since I practically raised her son, he can have my surname. That way he won't feel left out and she can take my name too. She said no, as he's had this name all his life and he shouldn't have to change it to appease me. I tried to explain that they have two separate fathers, so it's natural that they have different names. I suggested she use her maiden surname and hyphenate it with mine for our baby, and she can hyphenate her maiden name with her ex's for her son. That way the siblings will have almost the same name. That was turned down too. We have to register the baby's name next Thursday. I told her that we should probably get couples therapy and in the meantime register her with my name. She turns that down too, then said she went through the trouble of carrying her and pushing her out. She should get to decide this on her own. I even asked her son, and he said he doesn't mind having separate names, as he knows his father was his father, but I'm dad. He doesn't care if his sister has a different surname. I told my wife this, and she said I'm emotionally manipulating him. We had an argument five days ago, and we haven't spoken much. I didn't want to continue like this, as this should be our happy moments. Two days ago, I told her that the baby either gets my surname, or we're getting a divorce. I told her that perhaps her deceased husband could help raise our daughter with her since she doesn't want to acknowledge me as the dad. 
She called me a manipulator and says it's not fair that she doesn't get to decide the baby's first name on her own or the surname. Her suggestions for the first name when she was pregnant were feminine versions of her ex's name. Think Alexis, Alexia, Alexandra for Alexander, and his actual name if we had a boy. Today I called a solicitor and she overheard. She's telling me that I'm forcing her into a corner with this name thing, even though we went with her choice of first name after I ruled out the one similar to her ex's, and my choice is a middle name. I just want some outside opinions on whether I'm doing the right thing. Like, what am I doing with my life anymore? It's so messed up. Wait, hold on. Is this a case of her never changing her married name back after the passing of her ex? I understand her wanting to keep the same last name as her son, and I feel like the hyphenation is a great compromise, so I would say not the jerk, because it's ridiculous for her not to compromise. OP. Yes, she kept her ex's name, and I was fine with that, as she explained she wanted to have the same name as her son. But it seems she was keeping it for other reasons, as she still thinks it sounds better than mine. Wait. You said your wife still has the late partner's last name. Legally. That's a little different than her wanting to give your daughter a late partner's name to be honest. It's her name too. However, it is extremely weird that she wanted to name your daughter after him. The first name. OP. She's 43. Most of her life was under her maiden name. She has gone under his name for about 10 years, but she didn't officially change it until she added her ex-husband first and middle name to her son's official name when he was 7. Then she changed hers too. We were dating and exclusive, but I didn't mind thinking she was doing it for her son. It's only been her legal name for about six years. In the beginning, she did bring him up a lot. I was okay with the first few years, but then I had a talk with her, so she brought him up less and less. Then she changed her son's name and also her own. I didn't mind as she wanted the same name as him, and she was married to him, so I figured it was okay for her to change it even if she did it years after he had passed. When we were discussing marriage, she said she didn't want to change her new name to mine as mine is just bland. I didn't mind. Romantically, we were okay and she likes that I'm good with her son but won't let me adopt him. This caused a rift but to keep the peace, I backed down. While trying for a baby, we were more like roommates but she really wanted a baby and so did I. We were overjoyed when we found out it was a girl as she had always wanted one. Making a list of names and middle names caused some arguments but not major ones. Am I the jerk for telling my friend she should have seen her husband and her friend's affair coming? Background. I, 35 female, was friends with Julia, 35, and Alex, 34 female. We've been friends since college, but our tiny group expanded from 3 to 7. This story is about Julia and Alex. Two years ago, we all came to know that Alex was having an affair with a married man. Her excuse was that he was unhappy, and that's why he was seeking outside validation. I advised her to stop it, and this is not healthy because he will not leave his wife. She didn't listen, rather accused me of being a bad friend. All of my friends were against it, but to them it was not my monkey, not my circus. So I contacted the wife and told her everything. I knew who the wife was because the married man had once introduced us, and everyone in my friend group turned against me, especially Julia, because she thinks I betrayed my friends. She stopped talking to me because if I can betray a close friend of mine, then I can betray her as well. Alex was heartbroken because the married man decided he wanted to work on his marriage, so he broke things off with Alex. Julia was with Alex and I was shunned from our group. What happened now? A few weeks ago, I got a call from Julia. She was crying and telling me that Alex betrayed her. She's been having an affair with her husband and that she is heartbroken because she has supported her and this is how she repays her. Even our friend group is divided. I was angry at that moment. I mean, she ignored me for two years, badmouthed me, said that I was wrong. I literally warned her that Alex was toxic, so I told her that she should have expected this from Alex. I mean, did she really think that she will show loyalty towards you when she already did something immoral before? I knew the moment she made excuses of having an affair with a married man, her morals were compromised. I'm not religious, but I do have minimum respect towards other people and their feelings. And suffice to say, I'm not surprised she went after her husband. I do think I went too far because some of my other friends said I was too harsh on her. Even if what I said was the truth, I should have been more sensitive because she's going through a divorce. I do sympathize with Julia, but I also feel like as friends, sometimes we need to tell them the harsh truth. I know I said all of this when I was angry, but a part of me says she needed to hear that. Was I wrong? Was there any benefit to telling her this? It seems a little petty to me. OP. I agree it was petty, 
but at that moment I was angry. She ostracized me for telling the wife the truth and breaking up Alex's relationship because friends should stick together and she also took part in justifying the affair. I was just enraged by her hypocrisy. Update. I've read many of your comments and first of all I want to clear this out right now. I do not regret telling the wife about the affair. I do not think I did the wrong thing. My friend was doing something wrong in my opinion. She happily contributed to destroying a family knowing the man she was dating was married. I know the blame should be on him, but she also needs to take accountability for her actions. If I was getting cheated on, I would want to know. So, I guess the wife would also want to know. I know a lot of you have shamed me, but just know that I don't even care. I was not the affair partner, so why should I take the blame? I was simply a messenger. Now on to the actual update. I did speak to Julia and said that I was sorry. I shouldn't have punched down when she's already going through some stuff. I did not want to add to it. I know a lot of you have told me to just cut her off, but I realized I was too harsh on her. Even if what she did two years ago was wrong, but she came to me when she needed a friend. I can sympathize with her in her tough times. She just went on and on about how she felt betrayed by Alex when she has always defended her, even when her own parents disowned her. Just out of curiosity, I asked her if she has plans to divorce her husband or work things out. She said she's going to file for divorce. Her husband is begging her for another chance and even said he'll cut off all contact with Alex along with the offer of opening their marriage on her end. But she's headstrong on her divorce. She did ask for my forgiveness and I do forgive her, but I still do not want anything to do with her. I do feel sorry for her and I hope she finds peace, but our friendship will never be restored to its own glory. She said that she understands and this is probably her karma and God is punishing her. She's quite religious. That's the end. I hope she takes him to the cleaners, and from the grapevine, I heard that Alex has been shunned from my former friend group because now they're afraid she might go after their husbands. And as for Alex, I do believe she is a psycho who enjoys breaking up families. I do not think any amount of exposing will work on her because she has no shame. She deliberately goes after married and committed men, and I'm glad I cut ties with her way before she could get to me. That's it. Have a great life, and stay away from all the Alexes of this world. Am I the jerk for telling my sister-in-law that she's welcome to get a hotel if she's going to keep complaining about everything in my house? I'm 28 female. My brother, Alex, who's 33, and his wife, Rachel, who's 35, and their daughter, who's 7 months, are staying with me until after Christmas because they're back in our hometown for the month and our parents' house is being renovated so they have nowhere else to stay. I'm a nurse and I work strange shifts sometimes. A few nights ago, I got home at around 2 a.m. after my shift. Usually I work either day or night shift, so getting home at 2am was unusual, but it happens sometimes. Anyway, I walk in the house as quietly as I could, but the stairs creak, so Rachel heard me coming up. The next morning, she asked if coming home at 2am will be a regular occurrence, because I woke her up. She asked if I can avoid coming home at such hours, or walking up the stairs, because she'll wake up. I said I'll avoid it as best I can, but some things will be unavoidable, and I apologize in advance. She keeps complaining every time me or my brother walk up or down the stairs when she's trying to take a nap or at night when she's asleep. She's been complaining about literally everything. She'll say stuff like, Ugh, this Wi-Fi is horrible. Ugh, this area is too noisy. I can't sleep. Ugh, this couch is bad for my back. The fruits here are terrible. These forks are too thin. If she was complaining about things that I could change easily, then I wouldn't mind because I do want them to enjoy their stay here. But hearing her complain about everything under the sun is draining. I hate coming home from work just to hear her complain and complain and complain. Yesterday, after she was complaining about how much she hates my induction stove and telling me I should just get a regular gas stove, I said I keep my house just as I like it, so she shouldn't worry about it. She said, yeah, it's how I like, but it makes it difficult for guests. I said I barely ever have guests, and the only reason they're staying with me is because I wanted to do them a favor but that they're absolutely welcome to get a hotel if she's just going to keep complaining about everything. She told my brother about our conversation and he said I've put him in a tough spot because he can't afford to get them a hotel or an Airbnb for weeks, but now I've made his wife not want to stay with me anymore. I said that's all on his wife and none of that is my problem. Things are very hostile and weird around here now. Am I the jerk? Not the jerk, but you need to sit both of them down and tell them that you want them to stay but your complaint tolerance level has been reached. They're free to stay, but one more complaint and the decision to stay is yours, not theirs. 
I don't even know why you feel the need to apologize for walking up the stairs in your house. Your sister-in-law is a tad too entitled and she needs a reality check. Stop tiptoeing around her. Karma is a jerk and so was she. This story is from quite a few years ago, back when I was a bartender in a corporate style cookie cutter restaurant. I mostly worked nights, but had one regular mid-shift on Fridays. We were always super busy at the bar for lunch on Fridays and usually had quite a few of the mall workers coming in to eat, then head back to work. Nearly every Friday, the same smug, borderline rude lady came in for lunch. Every time she paid exact change, zero tip. Maybe half the time she would complain over some minor inconvenience and more than a few times got a comped meal. The more I had to wait on her, the more indignant and upset I got. So around Christmas time, I was out and about in the mall buying for family and friends. Picked out something nice for my girlfriend at the time, a sheer top which I thought would look amazing on her, decently priced with it being on sale too. Walking up to the register, I was a bit surprised to run into resting jerk face. Whatever. In street clothes, I felt like she barely registered who I was. Or maybe she really didn't care who was at her register. Maybe both. So I hand her a $20 bill. She examines it for a moment turns it over twice, held it up to the light even. Then, out comes the counterfeit pin marker, thinking to myself, a bit excessive, no? Change should have been around a dollar and change. Surprisingly, she hands out $81 plus change. She calls next in line, so I step to the side for a moment in contemplation. I could honestly feel the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other. It took me a moment or two, but I finally let my moral compass win and stepped back in front of the register. I nicely explained that there was a mistake made, but before I could continue, she shot me down and briskly told me in a semi-professional tone to get out of here. So I did. The way I look at it, all those lost tips and the money she just gifted me was just karma. Suck to be her, I guess. Karen's brats refuse to eat my Christmas dinner. I, 31 female, am going to be hosting Christmas celebration this year. The menu is usual and everyone is familiar with it. My sister-in-law's kids are what they call the most vicious picky eaters out there. Mind you, they're six and nine and are probably just being deliberately difficult to their parents. Sister-in-law called to inform me that she will be bringing food for her kids to eat at Christmas dinner. I asked her why and she said that they will not be able to eat anything from the menu after looking at it. I said that I was sorry, but there isn't enough space at the table for extra meals and besides that, the kids should really start learning to be more tolerant to some foods, especially at family holiday gatherings where it's expected for everyone to just eat what's in front of them without complaining. She went on about how difficult kids can be. Mostly can't relate, but I get it. But still, she should keep in mind that it's probably a passing phase for them, so sucking it up for one dinner wouldn't affect them. She said that I don't get it and that she doesn't want them to stay hungry or feed on snacks. I apologized and declined. My husband got involved in this and he's saying I'm being inconsiderate towards my guests. He said that I lose nothing by allowing them to bring food, but I disagree because this was not part of my plan. And if anything, this should be a teachable moment for the kids to know that they can't expect to be catered for all the time. He got more upset and told me that his sister is heavily reconsidering coming to a celebratory dinner where her kids weren't allowed to bring their own food. They're applying pressure on me, saying I'll ruin the celebration if I keep trying to die on this hill. Am I the jerk? You're the jerk. It's not your place to provide a teachable moment. Get over yourself. She's not asking you to cook special food, and she's bringing it herself. Their food can be put on their plates, so your no-room argument makes no sense. Make sure to dress up as Scrooge for the meal. You're the jerk. Exactly. You don't get to choose the teachable moments for someone else's kids. Your husband's right. It costs you nothing to be gracious. You don't have to do anything extra. She was just being courteous by giving you a heads up. Don't make this a thing. Let everyone enjoy the day. Ironically, this is a perfectly teachable moment for OP, that you're going to have to accept things will not play out the way you want them to when you have events like she is doing. You're the jerk. Either you want to dictate what people are eating or you want to enjoy your family at a holiday gathering. These posts about inhospitable hosts are getting tedious. I prepare all of our family's holiday meals, and I could give a rat's backside if people bring a favorite dish of their own food. And your excuse, there isn't enough space at the table for extra meals, is ridiculous and absolute malarkey with a side of horse manure. 
You're the jerk. Why are you so intent on ruining Christmas for kids? This won't actually put you out at all. You're just gatekeeping Christmas dinner for some weird reason. I mean, I can be a control freak, but I've got nothing on you. Methinks your heart needs to grow a couple of sizes. P.S. No one likes the sound of kids crying because they're hungry and don't like the food. Don't make everyone listen to it. Well, what do you think? Is OP the jerk or not? Please let us know. They wanted to start messing with the cat that I told them not to. This happened about four years ago and I still laugh about it to this day. My older cousin had a cat named Tara when she was younger. Tara was a total loose screw and she would bite and scratch anyone who so much as looked at her funny. And don't get me started when you dare disturb her sleeping. Never mess with Tara when she's sleeping. Tara only really felt comfortable around my cousin and I. She liked me because I usually helped my cousin feed her because I wanted to know what it was like taking care of a cat as I want my own. Plus, I was already close with my cousin. Now here's where it gets good. My aunt and uncle were having a little family gathering and they decided to invite some of their close friends. Among them were their demonic kids, Mini Bigfoot, who was six, and Mini Yeti. Those two couldn't sit still or shut up for at least one second, and the parents just let it all happen. They would use the excuse, they don't know any better. They probably would if you set a boundary or something at least. So while they're downstairs terrorizing the adults and anyone else who was brave and patient enough to be in the same room as them, me, my cousin, and her friend all just chill upstairs. They both are talking about some stuff with school and all that nonsense that I didn't bother listening to. They both leave the room to go run a few errands and buy some more cat toys as Tara had demolished the previous ones. So now I'm left in the room alone with a little furball that's curled up on the bed having a darn good nap. Then I hear the sounds of rapid footsteps and I didn't need to peek out to see who it was. Both gremlins walk in the room and immediately point out all the drawings on the walls of Nintendo characters. My cousin loves Nintendo. Then little mini Bigfoot has to point out that there's a fluffy kitty on the bed. They reach over to pet her and I inch their hands away and tell them to not disturb her. For some background, I already had a bad beef with these two because when they were at our house, Mini Yeti pulled my dog's ear and tail constantly and wouldn't stop. Mini Yeti starts to whine about how much she loves cats and she wants to cuddle the itty bitty kitty. I tell her that Tara hates when her sleep is disturbed and they still wouldn't go away. They went downstairs to tell their parents and they told me, let them pet the cat. It's not even yours and it's just a cat. I tried reasoning with them and even my aunt and uncle sided with me, but they still wouldn't understand as they swore it was just a regular house cat. I walked back upstairs and suddenly I got a huge grin on my face. I told the kids that they can go play with the cat and they started laughing at me and taunting me, but soon the tables would turn. They went inside of the room and I camped outside the door. For about five seconds, I could just hear the wow from one of the kids. Then it finally came, an ear piercing hiss and loud meow followed by a distant sound of clothes stretching and gremlins screaming. They both sprinted out of the room crying and the mini Bigfoot had a big scratch going down his right arm. Little Yeti had it worse as her nice new shirt was absolutely ripped and the cat had got her on the arm too. Their parents were furious at me and commanded me downstairs to scold me. They asked how could I let that cat scratch them like that and not do anything about it. I was gonna say something, but then my dad's face went white as he pointed at the stairs. We looked, and guess what we saw? At the top of the stairs, Tara was right there with her tail hunched back and her ears folded flat against her head. To add to that, the lights upstairs were off, so her eyes were glowing. The dad of the two kids thought it would be a good idea to punish a cat that wasn't his, so he marched up the stairs while staring down Tara. Bad move because Tara then leapt off the stairs and landed right on the dude's back and cut a huge cut in his shirt in the process. She then climbed off, then just went back up the stairs and went to sleep again, like she didn't just almost hurt them. When my cousin got back, we told her about the story, and she was mad at first. Then she started to laugh when we mentioned her cat wasn't hurt. Tara got a nice plate of tuna for dinner and a good back rub as a reward. Forgot to mention, Tara's still alive and kicking with my cousin. She's way different than she was years ago, as Tara takes time to warm up to strangers and doesn't just go full Bengal tiger mode on new people. She's way more lazier now as well.
but one thing will always stay with that cat, and that's that you do not disturb her when she's sleeping. You will catch those paws if you wake her up. Am I the jerk for telling my husband I refuse to be a stay-at-home mom? My husband and I are expecting and I am five months pregnant. We are over the moon and so looking forward to meeting our son. My husband owns and runs his own business and so do I. We are both very happy with our jobs. Recently, we started talking about schools, childcare, and jobs, etc. Now, it's important to note that my husband and I are very safety-oriented and wary of people we don't know. I stated that I'd like to go back to work pretty soon after the baby is born. I'm looking forward to spending time with the baby, but I am in no way interested in staying home with him full-time. I'm imagining being back full-time when he's around 8 to 10 months. My husband was under the impression that I'd be staying home with the baby until he goes to kindergarten, maybe even longer. I was a bit taken aback because I had no idea why he thought this. He stated he wasn't really comfortable with leaving our kid with a sitter. Note, nannies are hard to come by where we live, and we both require some certain safety requirements for said nanny, which makes it hard to find someone suitable. I told him I wanted to start looking into nannies before the baby was born, so that they could get to know the baby during my maternity leave. That way, they would both be familiar with each other by the time I go back to work. He started arguing a bit about what our expectations were. I understand not every mom would be comfortable with my choices, but I cannot handle being a stay-at-home mom. I know it would mentally tear me apart, and it has no appeal to me. We're both in control of our own work hours, so it's not like we won't spend any time with the baby. We just both love our jobs, and also need time to be people and not just parents. He said I was the jerk for not wanting to stay home until the baby starts school, and I said he was being a jerk for expecting that of me. He's respecting my decision and he supports me no matter what I decide. I recognize where he's coming from, but I just cannot for the life of me be a stay-at-home mom. But I guess I do feel a little bad because I'm wondering if I'm the jerk. Info. His business requires a bit more of him and requires him physically showing up for some parts of the job, which is why he cannot be the one to stay home. I have every means and access to stay home. I simply just do not want to. Am I the jerk for not staying home? Edit. It's an accidental pregnancy due to failed birth control, but we are now very happy. We've also talked about it in the past where he didn't show any discomfort with childcare. Guess we're all a little more overprotective when it comes to our own kids. Edit 2. I'm seeing a lot of comments stating, why didn't we have this conversation before marriage? We have. My husband and I have had this conversation and we both decided we wanted to be child free. We talked about it before we got married and have talked about it a lot since. We've even talked about accidental pregnancy, but never thought it would become real. This is a matter of failed birth control, and we just found out I was pregnant in month four, so we weren't really left with many options. Furthermore, my husband changed his mind about outside childcare once we were actually in the situation. Guess parental protectiveness kicked in. Not the jerk. OP, do not let your husband guilt trip you into thinking you're a bad mom or a bad wife if you don't stay home. Once you start staying home, the dynamics of your relationship will change, no matter what your husband says. Plus, going back to work will be much, much harder. Now it'll be your job, and your job alone, to make sure your kid gets to school on time, has a ride home, gets meals on time, and overall just as prepared for daily stuff. If your husband isn't willing to make sacrifices so he can stay home, then he should not be expecting you to stay home. Period. Not the jerk. You state... He is respecting my decision and he supports me, no matter what I decide. Are you delusional? No, I'm kidding. But he's not supporting your decision since you feel like this. If this is so important to him, he can make the sacrifice. Oh, wait, you say he can't? Well, neat, neither can you. He doesn't seem to support the fact that your mental health and love for your career exists. You both need to talk more about this. Will you be expected to be the one who drives the kid to school and picks them up every day? Sports activities? Friends' houses? Is he just providing the money? What's going on here? I'd recommend writing down some important points and sharing them. Or maybe move to an area where you can find the support for raising this kid and how you two would like. There are a lot more options than being a stay-at-home mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom, not by choice, and it has destroyed me. I'm not the person I was. I'm a hollow shell. Please don't get sucked into this. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her husband? Please let us know. Am I the jerk for making comments about someone not being able to have kids because she called me Kim Kardashian? 
I, 40 female, freely admit I love social media and pretty much share my life as per many people. I'm very proud of my accomplishments and deserve to share them. I have two beautiful kids, mid-teens, who I raise well. I train hard and take a lot of care over my appearance and clothes choices. I work hard and look after my beautiful home. We're also lucky to enjoy nice holidays. I share most of this as well as venting about, say, poor customer service, and most of my friends expect this. I accept this isn't for everyone, but they can just scroll past. This involves my sister's sister-in-law, her husband's sister. Let's call her Sam, 45. We are linked on social media and see each other occasionally at my sister's. My sister and Sam post a bit, but not much, and rarely comment on my posts. Up to them. Sister has two kids who are in their late teens. Sam does not have kids. I heard unofficially from my sister a few years ago that she had had fertility treatments which hadn't worked. We've never spoken about it. Sister's daughters adore Sam. She's also their auntie. When she's there, I don't get a look in. She spoils them. I think she does it on purpose. We were at sister's house for a pre-Christmas party. I was taking photos and eldest niece, who's 16, wanted to vet them before I posted them. This went on a bit too long. She looked good in all of them. My daughter does the same and I eventually made an executive decision to post the perfect picture anyway. Niece was upset. Sam took her side, sister was out of the room, and said it was up to my niece. I said she couldn't always get her own way. She needed to learn life was about compromise. Sam said we weren't the Kardashians and niece had the right to veto. Calling me Kim Kardashian felt so disrespectful and I said I was proud of my family and she would understand if she'd had her own kids. She flinched but didn't really respond and was icy to me all evening. My husband apologized to her on my behalf, which she didn't even accept, and niece actually shouted at me. Later, my sister and even brother-in-law were angry when they found out they called me later. But I didn't refer to her infertility, and what she said was really disrespectful, as if she was better than me. Am I really the jerk here? You're the jerk. Sam was absolutely correct. You shouldn't have posted the picture knowing your niece didn't like it. Second, having kids has nothing to do with this. You're not your niece's mom and neither is Sam. The two of you were having this conversation as aunts. You only threw in the comment about Sam not having kids to shut her up. Finally, you know that Sam wanted kids and was unable to have them. So for you to use the fact that she's childless to win an argument was just wrong. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.